Glory to God. Isaiah chapter 60, verse 11. Isaiah chapter 60, verse 11. Now, when I was, um, when I was younger in age, I knew that the Holy Spirit was going to use me mightily. I knew that the Holy Spirit was going to grant me uh, supernatural ministry. I knew that off top. There are certain things that you know because you become spirit. Remember I, um, John chapter 6, 63, the words I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. I think that's John 6, uh, verse 63. When you become spirit, there's certain things that you know. And so I knew that the Lord was going to give me a supernatural ministry. I knew that off top. But the pathway that the Father started dealing with, with me concerning manifesting it, See, you don't just want to know what God has for you. You want to know how to manifest what God has for you. And that's the difference. Like, you don't want to just have a whole bunch of head knowledge. You want the manifestation of what that knowledge brings. So, I remember even when the Holy Spirit had me working at different jobs. I knew that I was just passing through at the job. And you know, sometimes you pass through at jobs and people try to cling on to you because they like you. I've had that happen before. Won't get close to you, won't hang out apart from the job, the boss will favor you. But it's like you're just passing through. And so I've had that happen before. I remember I was inside of an apartment. I was working at this specific job. It was like a job where uh, you answer phones. And um, at first, I started off kind of slow until I <laughs> until I put my bare white voice on. And blessed be God, when a woman would call there, I would start making sales. <laughs> and I broke the record for sales. Now, what was crazy was I was lagging. I was like the last person in the job, but I had started naming my seed. I started moving with my seed and I would name my seed and I, I made my way prosperous. You have to know what you do when you're sowing. You're not sowing just because you feel pressure to sow. You, there's a mission to your sowing. And yes, there is a harvest that the Father will give you that's according to his predestined will. But there's a harvest that God will give you according to your will. And that's where naming the seed comes in. I had a preacher that, listen, gave me a testimony. That someone gave him $8,000. But their testimony was they was listening to that broadcast, Angel Harvest. That Angel Harvest is powerful. And the uh, spontaneous thing about the Lord is so good because there are some times where he just out of the blue saying you miracle money out of the blue, just saying you miracle prosperity. It's my job to keep the father in an inspired place because he's my major investor. See, saints, I knew when I was sowing that sometimes I was sowing because I wanted to keep my major investor inspired. There were some seeds that I sowed that I felt virtue come from the Lord, but I knew it. the seed aroused them. You want to find out when you serve in someone what, what arouses them, what makes them happy. And the seed makes the Lord so happy that he'll spontaneously provide for you. Now, there are two realms of provision that I want to talk to you about from Isaiah 60, verse 11. And these are all good. Glory to God. Glory to God. There's the there's predestined provision. Write that down. 
And then there's spontaneous provision. I'm going to be on here for a couple more minutes. Predestined provision is the provision that the Lord has already prepared for you before you were born. Spontaneous provision is where you're doing something in the now that's activating a fresh stream of ideas from in the Lord's mind. See, when I'm sowing, I can step into God's mind and release creativity into it. Now, mind you, he's already created. But the spontaneous provision is the provision that I activate because I'm currently doing something that he enjoys. I was doing that in my youth. I was operating in spontaneous acts of pleasure towards God. Spontaneous acts of sowing will bring you into spontaneous acts of financial favor and wealth favor. Now, wealth favor is so powerful because this is the Holy Spirit at work and the angels at work speaking to numerous people to get you across into the land of plenty. Now, the land of plenty is a position that you receive from the Father where you have extreme amounts of money in your possession. The land of plenty is where you have more than enough where you can share with someone else and still not be hurting. The wealth gates will empower you once you walk through those wealth gates for your life to experience ease. I have to sow my way into this. I, I, and I, I can't be someone that lets my focus be tampered with by people that's not going anywhere. I have to be zoomed in. You got to be fully focused. When I, when I started sowing heavy, I wasn't looking to the left or to the right. I wasn't concerned about what nobody was doing. I was zoomed in on Jehovah Jireh. And I was letting this God realm of riches and wealth sit on me. Imagination is very important in possessing your wealthy place. The father gave you an imagination to see your wealth, to see your riches. Once you see yourself having 10 figures, Having 11 figures, having 12 figures, once you see yourself going beyond, wherever your mind goes, that's what you're going to possess. Wherever your mind goes, you shall have it. The Father can only supply you at the level you choose to go in your imagination. But there's another twist to this. Imagine the seed as much as you imagine the harvest. Because the, the father is looking for true worshipers, remember. So if you meet the, the pleasure of God, which is in the true worship, you just, you just unlocked him. To giving you what you want. You see what I'm saying? And, and listen, I'm not telling you something that I think. You you listen to a lot of preachers. They, they try to tell you what they think. I'm not telling you what I think. I'm telling you where I've walked. I know this word to be true. I have to imagine the seed just as much as I'm imagining the harvest. Or else... I disqualify myself from what I saw myself harvesting or receiving. 
The Lord gave you an imagination so that your, your ability to pleasure him will be at its climax. Imagination is so powerful that once you see something, the father knows that you and you focus on it and you imagine it, that now you have the power to produce it. Remember in Genesis, they imagined the Tower of Babel. The father said, let us go down and confuse their language because once they have imagined it, they shall bring it to pass. The father knows how powerful the imagination is. Imagination is the strength to create what you see. It is also the wisdom to find out how to create what you see. My God. You see how God took Abraham and he took Joshua and he let them see wherever your, your feet go, it shall be yours. But he had to let them see it. Imagination will give you the authority to manifest things that you're seeing in your mind. Angels will move with you even off of imagination. I want to go further into this, but. Okay, I'll go further into it. Bible said. God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you could ask. That's a bracket in itself. You ask with your mouth. But then it said, think. When it went to think, it just said that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you think. So. The thinking realm is where you're imagining. And when you're imagining the father lets you know that there's a department in your imagination that magnetizes his power. I see myself rich today. <laughs> I see myself out of debt. I see myself living big. Who, who going to stop me? I see myself wealthy. I see myself rich. I see myself with the money trucks of Jesus visiting me and inhabiting my location right now. I see myself being located by large money. I see myself moving into my wealth gates, one after the next, going from glory to glory financially. Who gonna stop me? I'm, I'm magnetizing the power of the Holy Spirit. God is doing exceedingly abundantly above all that I could think. I see myself a multi-trillionaire. I see myself a multi-gazillionaire. I see myself moving in uncontrollable money. I see harvests from years ago being released to me right now. I see fresh money moving in my life in 2020. I see myself as the lender and not, not as the borrower. I don't see myself as a borrower. I see myself as the lender. Ephesians chapter one, verse three says, the Lord has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in the heavenly places in Christ. Riches is one of these heavenly blessings. Riches has been empowered to move in your life. Riches. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 60, verse 11. How many of y'all got that? Can somebody write it on the screen? Money trucks of Jesus is moving in my life. 
I receive all my financial chariots. In this month of December, on the first of this month, I receive financial increase. And I'm not going to miss God in this. I will not miss any sowing graces in this month. Father, I'm not going to miss you. I don't care what demon tried to distract me. I'm not going to miss you. This month, I'm going to sow according to To the flow and the power of the Holy Spirit. I'm not afraid to dominate and rule and reign. Did y'all notice that Thanksgiving was on the 28th? Deuteronomy 28 day. You notice that, right? Huh? These blessings shall overtake you. Let's go to Isaiah 60, 11. You notice that, right? Thanksgiving fell right on Deuteronomy 28. The Lord know what he's doing. May a double portion of wealth sit on you. You receive it? I am a blessed. I'm a blessed man. I'm successful in every area. I have no sicknesses in my body. I'll never have any sicknesses in my body. You think I don't come to you for prayer because I'm proud? No. Nope. <laughs> I don't come to you for prayer because I know my, my I know my weapons. I'm not looking for clarity. I pull it. I get it. I'm not looking for strength. I am strength. I'm not looking for joy. I am joy. I'm not looking for wisdom. I am wisdom. I'm not looking for prosperity. I am prosperity. I am wealth. I am money cometh. I am supernatural money. I am riches. I am liberty. I am freedom. I am Jesus. I am Jesus. Get all the religious people mad. I am Jesus. I am the Holy Ghost. I am the Holy Ghost. I am, I, I am the Holy Ghost. Get all the traditional demons mad that don't know the Bible. I am the Holy Ghost. You told us how the Father look. He that sees me sees the Father. How Jesus look. He that sees me sees Jesus. How does the Holy Ghost look? He that sees me sees the Holy Ghost. Isaiah 60, verse 11. Therefore, your gate shall be open continually. Therefore, your gates shall be open continually. Number one, child of God, you have to see that you have gates. When I'm sowing into my God-ordained man of God, I'm sowing into the soil that the Father has given to me. I'm entertaining all of my gates. I'm keeping them underneath the oil. I'm keeping my gates open. I'm receiving the benefits, the results, the harvests of having an open gate. Look what it said. Therefore, your gate shall be open continually. Look, there's a continual flow of these open gates. It didn't say your gate. It says your gate. So there's more than one avenue where the Lord gets plenty of money to you. There's more than one avenue that the Lord shocks you with divine abundance, divine increase. The Lord is not stuck in his, his, his uh, way to get increase to you. 
it says that your gates, you got more than one gate. Father, I receive more than one streams of income right now. In Jesus name is easy. I receive the easiness of God. See, you got to notice when you're sowing, when you're working. That's why you can't look at your job and start looking at the co-workers and what the boss is doing. Because you're not really there for all that observation. You unlocking your, your, your kingdom rights as a son. As royalty. That job is not going to be the finale of money cometh in your life. Money cometh is another dimension of of the father taking care of you and making sure you show forth his testimony in the earth. You show forth the covenant correctly. You are representative of the kingdom representing wealth correctly. How God takes care of his people righteously, lavishly. Giving testimony of the Lord Jesus with a lot of money. I received the grace for a lot of money. I received the grace for a lot of money. No demon of tradition and no demon of complacency can stop me from sowing the way that I want to sow. I will not be a slave to fear any longer. And I will not let what I have determine how I worship my God. I shall sow what I imagine. Sowing affects financial favor at your work or whatever you're putting in your hands. It makes people listen to God about investing in you. Sh Sharika is somebody that sow a lot into my ministry. I think Sharika have sown, uh, she gave me a number, I think you said 28,000 over, over a course of time. She allowed so in the ministry. Let me, uh, I'm giving reference to this because Sharika would testify how people put money in her hands. But she activate that because she's so into me. You see what she said? 3,700 this month. So that's three thousand and seven hundred dollars. That's three thousand seven hundred dollars. See, I, I'm just saying, let me just say this, uh, saints. I had it in my mind. I ain't going to let nobody out. So me in the back of my mind, I had a competition mind in my head. <laughs> when I was young, I wasn't looking at other sores, but I, in the back of my mind, I, was like, I ain't going to let nobody out. So me. Let's be God. Oh, you want a piece of me? Put it on the table, doggone. Oh, you put five more in there? Hold on, I'm gonna have to pray about that one. Cause <coughs> can you get me? Go get grandma. Go get the Mentos. She got all the mints in her pocket. I know it is in the left sack. Don't go over to the right sack, cause she got a couple razors and a switchblade. It'll cut you. Because she got raped when she was younger. The man jumped out of the bushes and she was unprepared. So she got the switch blade over on the right. Go over to the left sack. All right. I'm not talking about no brother. All right. I said the left sack in the bag. You feel me? That's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the left sack. All right. Isaiah chapter 60 verse 11. Therefore, your gate shall be open continually.
continual opening of wealth gates will bring the believer into the climax of what life was always supposed to be. The continual open of wealth gates will bring the believer into the life that it was always, into the life that was always supposed to be. You have a life that's supposed to be that you have to receive sowing grace to get there. Saints, you're going to meet a lot of people that's going to emphasize to you, pray and emphasize all this other stuff to you. But you go look at those people and find out how much do they own. You go find out how much have they dominated financially. Go find out how much have they achieved for the Lord. Because you, you can't achieve much without money. There are people that want to talk to me just because they think that I look rich. I slide the gospel right in. I've had people come up to me, say, listen, I can't help but ask you, what do you do? I'm not going to do you. That's all you need to know. Thank you. Have a nice day, President Trump for President 2020. Isaiah chapter 60, verse 11. You having continual open wealth gates. Watch this. They shall not be shut day nor night. So the Bible is saying that your income of wealth is going to be constant. Money going to be moving in the daytime and money going to move in, on in the nighttime. Father, I receive. I receive wealth moving, money moving in my life in the day and in the night. You never pray like that, huh? And said those words. Say it. I receive money moving for me in the day and in the night. Look at this. They shall not be shut day nor night. Now, why are these gates not shut? Number one, demons can't access it because you're sowing. They can't touch your gates because of the honor, fire of God that's around your life. That's why I talk to you about sowing fire. The sowing fire of the Holy Spirit is around your life. And demons can't trespass against the entry of money to you. The, the way that the father has chosen to get money to you, to travel to you, no demon can stand and block it. Now, there's a lot of people that the demon is standing and blocking their money because they don't walk in the sowing mystery. And there's some people that walk in the sowing mystery, but they sowing into the wrong soil. You sow into the wrong person, this ain't going to work. Well, who do I sow into? Just sow into the air. That's what you do. Just throw your money in the air. Because that's because if you sow it into the air, you'll get a harvest of what's in your mind. And guess what you're going to receive? An airhead. Oh, my gosh. This, wow. This, wow. This is powerful. This is powerful. Isaiah chapter 60, verse 11, it says that men shall bring unto you. The wealth of the Gentiles in another text, it says the forces of the Gentiles. Now. I looked at the Bible and I, I looked and I studied. Why will one text say wealth and the other Text say forces.
Because having plenty of money is forces. It's a force in the spirit realm, but it's, a, it's more than one force. Now watch this. When you are a law official, we also call them law enforcement. So here's what happens. When I receive wealth, I can enforce the law of God in my city, in my home. Think about it, children. Sometimes you can't enforce the law of God because you're living with someone that's lawful, un lawless. Think about it. Think about it. And so if they, if they do everything they do, you can't enforce the law. But see, you can in, you 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 have the force called wealth for you to enforce the kingdom wherever you go. Wow. So wealth was called the forces because it goes against all the demonic forces as well. Once you get the wealth that the evil people had. And that's how they was able to enforce the demonic on the earth. Think about that. That's how the, de the devil's children enforce the demonic kingdom on the earth. Because they use the wealth. The wealth is a force. It's forces. It's more than one force. So they can release the force of Satan in different avenues. What his laws are. They're enforcing his laws different places because the wealth. When you get your wealth, you can enforce the law of God, the kingdom of God, wherever you go. So, so that's why people feel your presence when you walk in places. Since I walk in some places that people, that people they, they have me skip somebody that was already in line. I said, I have to tell the person at the desk, no, it's okay. You can have them go. The father told me they feel the presence. They don't have to know what you do. They don't know who you have to know who you are. They feel the presence of authority. They feel like, oh, I should deal with this one first. You're a force to be reckoned with when you step into your wealth place, your wealthy place with God. Your wealth anointing with God. The wealth power of God is not a mediocre power. It'll bring you into levels of God's goodness and his favor and his finances that you always wanted to experience. The Lord will not disappoint. He will anoint the sower. Write that down. The Lord will not disappoint. He will anoint the sower. The sower will have what the sower imagined. And whatever the sower names the seed, the sower shall possess. The law of creation is in large sowing. Large sowing occurs when I'm fully persuaded about the seed and what it produces. I can't sow large until I get convinced. Because there's going to be sides of me still trying to save my life financially. And when I'm trying to save my life financially, I, I have to submit to the slowness of this natural world and what it will throw at me. There are so many people choose to eat crumbs when the father then gave you an invitation at the banquet. But you got to eat crumbs as long as you're not a sower. As long as you're not a sower, you got to eat crumbs and you got to wait on people. People that ain't got no heart. People that sometimes like to see you suffer. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. See, the sowing anointing will keep your gates open day and night. That's a constant flow of wealth. Now, I want you to, I want you to see this. My sowing 
releases the law of creation for investors to come into my life like a strong invasion. When I'm sowing, I step into investors and it will deliver me from all my financial molesters. Financial molestation is where demons are sent since you was born to demean you through provision and shame you through provision. Imagine that there's demons that's assigned to shame you, make you look like you lesser than who you are. They want to misrepresent you. They want to molest you, take away your financial dignity. They want to make you look like you always struggling and always trying to make a dollar and always trying to make something happen. And you a hustler. They want to make you look like that. That's not who you are. Everything belongs to you already. You're not sowing because you're trying to make God want to give you wealth. You're sowing because this is your retaliation against the demons that been molesting you from your wealth. This is the spiritual weapon that the father has given you to fight back. The seed not only give you back financial dignity, but it give you back mental dignity. There are some areas in God that you'll never be able to chew on until you become a sower. When you sow in, when God reveals to you his secrets and his mysteries, you're not going to get offended. You're not going to get mad. You're not going to contradict him. You're not going to look for 50 scriptures or how do you can fight back on what he's telling you. Sowing, it softens your heart to hear God in the secret place. Sowing delivers you from a hard heart, a rebellious heart. Sowing makes you adapt. To the size of the father that has not been revealed to many. Sowing puts you in position. For the Holy Spirit. To talk to you without sugarcoating. The father will use a sower faster than a prayer warrior most times. Because every time I sow a seed, I'm laying down my life. I'm taking away my security. Money is security in the natural realm. That's why so many people, their life going so slow because they're trying to save up money. You got to sow. You got to listen to the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost going to pit saw in front of you for you to sow into. Sowing will give you access. To the unrevealed sides of God's heart. Things that he not talking to with others. They might be his children, but he not going to talk with them. Because obvi uh, obviously there, there's not a heavy weight of trust. A father know that they, they, they haven't grown. Either it's immaturity or it's just they're going to fall away over time. Some people just, they just got immaturity. And some people, they're, they're going to be people make it in, make it in uh, to heaven that they was at a, a, a lesser level than other people. Because they didn't pursue God. I heard the Holy Spirit just say that. If you don't pursue God, you're going to have bad health. You're going to have bad money status for the rest of your life. You got to pursue God to break past that. You're going to have bad mentalities. If you don't pursue God, your mind going to be jacked up. If you don't pursue God, every day you wake up, you better pursue him 
for the wisdom, for your conduct, for your mentality, for your words, for your servanthood. Glory to God. You got to pursue the Lord. You got to run after him. You got to be on fire. You got to be interested. Don't let nothing take away your interest. You're not here for you. There's nothing on this earth that's more interesting than the Lord Jesus. Don't let nothing take you away from your interests. Not a person. Not a place. Not a thought. Not an emotion. Don't let nothing take away your interests. Saints, look at my life. I should be your example. Have you ever seen me disinterested in Jesus? Tell me what time in my ministry did you have to come to me to encourage me to keep on preaching because I shut down on God? Tell me when have you ever, those of you who have known me for years, that you had to encourage me so that I can jump back into my assignment? When? When? Because saints, my heart is pure. Purity never quits. And purity is never distracted. And purity is never moved. Purity is consistent. It keeps on going. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Whether you see the reward or the sword being presented to you in a season, whether you see adversity or prosperity Manifesting in a season. Purity keeps on going. God will test you too. Do you know God will withdraw the tangibility of his presence just to see what you're going to do? You know that, right? I've had God do that to me many a times. I've had many a times where the father took away the tangibility of his presence to see if I was still going to be in joy. To see if I was still going to move in wisdom. To see if I still was going to minister to you. If you notice, in the midst of a lot of heat that I was experiencing, I did an 11 hour broadcast. I broke the record for any man in the world, in the, any man in the history. Jesus told me one time, he said, son, do you know I never did an 11 hour teaching? But he said, I did it through you. So technically I have done it. You say, how could Jesus tell you that? These works you I've done, you shall do also in greater works. I never lost my zeal, never lost my fire. Because I'm not... It, that's how you'll know if, if, if I had wrong motives. See, saints, there are even things where God will let you see my intent of my heart to see what was I in it for? Was I in it for people or was I in it for him? If I'm in it for people, you'll see me fall away because people fall away. If you, if you think that I was in it for, for, for Jesus, you'll see that I stand when other people fall. It will make no difference to me because my heart is pure. You know, God going to test you in order for you to move in this wealth. You got to have a pure heart. You got to pass the test. The father will withdraw his presence from you. He won't let you feel him. He'll, and he'll let demons talk to you. Do you know that there's a section in your life where the father will schedule, all right, demons, go forth. And sometimes the father withdraws and let them talk to you. See what you're going to do. And in your mind, in your mind, and you have the choice whether or not you're going to win, you can fail. Why fail? Why go through another retesting? Pass the test. Pass the test. You got to if you're going to walk in these wealth gates. See, there's more to this. There's more to this. If you're going to walk in these wealth gates, God going to try you. Because what, what you going to do when you get offended and you got a million dollars in your hands? You're going to shut down on the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit say, I want you to give the million dollars. No, I'm mad. No, I want you to give the... I'm mad right now. 
I need the million dollars right and I'm mad. I want you to give a hundred thousand. I'm offended. I'm hurt. I want you to give a hundred thousand. I'm hurt. I'm offended. I need day 21, day 15, day 33. I need the hundred thousand dollars to go. No, I'm offended. I just don't feel like doing it right now. So here's what God does. He'll take you through boot camp with your mind, with your emotions, with your decisions. You got to develop this consistency. Let me show you something in the word of God to back what I'm saying. So that you can understand what I mean. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 27. But the substance of a diligent man is precious. Look. The substance is the wealth, the riches. But look what it says. The, but the substance of a diligent man. This man's wealth is there because of diligence. Not because the man just got a pass from God. Not because the man just got a little free ticket and the father said, okay, I'll overlook some things. Go ahead. I'll just act like I don't see that. The diligent man. So diligent woman. That means diligent male and female. Diligent man means diligent male and female. That's how you unlock your substance, your wealth, your abundance. You got to be diligent. You can't let things bother you. You can't let things hinder you. You got to go forth with the Holy Spirit at all costs, even if you don't feel like it. The Bible said, if you put your hand to the plow and you look back, you're not fit for the kingdom. That's what the word of the Lord Jesus said. You don't ever want to find yourself looking back. Give yourself solely to the gospel. Don't wait for things to meet your quota for you to give yourself fully to the gospel. Give yourself fully to the gospel now so that when things come, you'll know how to cast them down. You can't cast them down if you waiting for a certain atmosphere. Become the atmosphere so that when things come, you'll be ready to deal with it and bring it underneath subjection to the anointing on your life. See, the disciples was waiting for something. Jesus was already there. He wasn't waiting for nothing. So when the storm came, they got nervous. They started talking, saying, if you, if you loved us, why would you let us perish? Look, look how crazy they acting. Just because of a storm. Because they got the storm dominating their whole atmosphere. They not prepared. They didn't make the decision to follow Jesus yet. You saw their body move, but their mind did not move. Think about that. The disciples' body went go follow Jesus, but their mind did not follow Jesus. In their mind, they saying, how, could, how dare you? You got us out here in this storm. That sounds the same thing like Moses was saying. Did you, and they, uh, uh, they were saying to Moses, did you let us, why did you bring us out to this wilderness to die? You don't want your body just to move and your mind not. Get your mind first. You know, there's something that a lot of people do, like some people will leave everything for Jesus. And then when they fail Jesus, now they, now they start talking about, oh, I was manipulated into leaving all this. Baby, you just fell. <laughs> Jesus ain't done did you nothing. You just you just disqualified yourself. You ain't you, there's nobody you can be mad at. You gotta be mad at you. You know, do you know that uh if you say yes to the Lord, just go all the way in. You better lose yourself. No, because that's how I operate. You think that I'm living for people? If I was living for people, you would have saw me change a long time ago. I'm not living for people. The Holy Spirit is the one that called me. He anointed me. He picked me where I am. That's why nobody can move me. If, if it was dependent, if, listen, let me just say this. If I was a false prophet, and if I came on the scene falsely, I would have been removed a long time ago. 
But because no man pit me here, no man can get me out of here. You see what I'm saying? So what I'm telling you is that you better keep your commitment to the Holy Spirit so that nobody can move you out. Stick with your first love. Stick with your first love. All money, all riches, all wealth is in this law. Stick with your first love. All your prosperity is in this. Stick with your first love. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Stick with your first love. That's the only way you're going to move in these wealth gates is if you stick with, with your first love. See, everybody in the Bible that moved in wealth, Solomon, uh, Abraham, Job, look how all of them went through heavy times, opposition, adversity. But look how they stuck with their first love. It don't matter. Stick with your first love. True prosperity is going to cause a reaction of persecution. So one thing that you must know that when the father makes you wealthy and rich, that people are going to talk about you bad more. Never focus on that. The best thing that you can do is never become a student to a critic. Don't sit at the feet of a critic. It will only damage your mind. You will know when you're dealing with someone that is carrying a prosperity anointing because you'll be inducted into their same persecution. People will persecute you the way that they persecute them. Rejoice when that happens. Don't run away. Don't hide. How many of y'all ever saw me hiding? How many of y'all ever, in the years that you have followed me, how many of y'all ever saw me hiding? You see what I'm saying? I don't want to sit underneath no leader that's running from the devil. But blessed be God, if you ain't got no authority over the devil, how am I going to have authority over the devil and I'm following you, I'm submitting to you? <laughs> you let me know the level of my authority. My authority is to run as fast as I can. Run, Cletus! Run, Forrest, run. The only time you should be running is running and not being weary, walking and not fainting. The eagle anointing. God looks for that. He that is faithful of a few things, God will make him rule over much. Keep your faithfulness. That's the secret to promotion. Don't change. That's the secret to promotion. Don't change. In my lifetime, I've met a lot of people that the father spoke to me about. Father said, hey, listen, we might do this. We might do this. And then the person changed and the father said, uh, as a matter of fact, let's hold off. And then the father said, then never mind. Boy, and I can feel the discouragement in the father's voice when he do that. It made me want to tell him, Lord, oh, Lord, please don't, don't even study that. Lord, please, I'm sorry. I start repenting for people. I've done that many times. And the Lord said, no, son, it's not you. People have a decision they have to make. You can't cover them and make them make a decision. You can, you can, only, and you can only give them the wisdom, the understanding, the knowledge. And since I find myself repenting for people, Lord, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. The Lord said, no, what you telling me sorry for? You didn't do nothing. God get disappointment, uh, people of God. God get disappointed.
God get disappointed, saints. He get disappointed. That's why, that's why I, that's why you don't see me. I don't, I don't, I don't get lackadaisical with the Lord because he get disappointed. You don't want the father to get disappointed. Sometimes the devil gets you to stop the path, the momentum that you're going with the Lord and you abort everything. Where, let, let me ask you a question. Where does your life go when you stop doing what the Lord wants you to do? Where? You can go to, from city to city, state to state. You're going nowhere. Your life becomes vanity. So when you think about that, whatever the Lord wants me to do, this is my value. This is what makes me treasurable. If I'm not, I'm just... I'm, tr I'm trash if I don't do what the Lord wants me to do. So oftentimes God pit people back with trash. Saints, let me give you an honest to God truth. If you don't want the plan of God, he going to pit you back with your vomit. He going to pit you back in a situation that you really don't want. And you're going to have to live a life of dissatisfaction. And you're going to have to be a prisoner to a demon. Whether it be a man that does not love God, whether it be a, 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 a career that's draining, there's no joy. The Bible said, like a dog um, returns back to his vomit, so is someone that departs from the path that God has for their life. The Bible compared it to as a dog returns back to its vomit. You know how nasty that is? Do you know what vomit represents? Somebody throwing up all that nastiness. That's what it gives the picture of someone that does not want to do what God says. You have to live a nasty life, a life that's demeaning, embarrassing disgusting. I've had that many times in my life. That's why I have so much diligence because I have the power to promote. I have the power to promote. I have the power to exalt. I have the power to anoint. I'm in the same God realm as God. I have the power to do that. So I can take you places. But most times people, they literally say no. I know people on the earth for years, years I've been in ministry. I've gone through many a people. The Lord said, we're going to do this and this for the person. Over time, the person, they turn against God. God said, never mind, just forget it. And I hear the disappointment in his voice. It made me a workhorse. It made me take on this work ethic that I have. There are some preachers that the father come to me by night, says, son, they're sleeping. So I'm going to give you their message. I can't get them. I can't talk to them. So I'm going to talk to you and give you their portion of anointing. I'm going to give you their portion of revelation. That's why the father promotes people because of their diligence. Not because you got a pretty face. Not because you are a handsome man. Not because you got muscles as a man. Not because you, 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 you got uh, a breast or you got legs or whatever you got as a woman. Those stuff don't move God. Remember, he see naked people. He created you. He created your breasts. He created all that stuff don't turn them on. What turns him on is consistency. When he sees that nothing in this life can stop you from doing what he told you to do. That's what makes God promote you. That's the secret to going higher and higher and higher and higher and higher and higher. That's the secret. I've never let anything in this life stop me from listening to my God. The father has never come to me and said, son, I need you to get back up. I need you to start working for me. I need you to get back on the ball. You slacking. Never has the father had to come to me and tell me that. 
I stay on the go for him. Every day I wake up, I don't care about nobody. I don't care about no physical health. I'm not worried about that stuff. I'm worried about how are you doing today, Jesus? And if you're not happy, I'm not happy. Let's get this thing right. What I need to do, let's follow through with this. That's the mindset of a wealthy person. People that become wealthy in the kingdom of God have a tenacity and a determination within them that is very rare. They have an imagination and a momentum that they carry that's unstoppable. And they get things done for Jesus. 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 Done for Jesus. No matter if people leave them, no matter if they're left alone, they get things done for Jesus. Your mind got to be right. What you going to do when you get a lot of money and the Lord tell you to go to your biggest enemy and drop a bag on them? What you going to do? You going to tell the Lord all the stuff why you're not going to do it? Your mind got to be right. You got to be dead to walk in wealth. You got to be dead. You got to follow the Holy Ghost at all times and he'll help you. He'll help you. Praise God. Glory to God. Glory to God. He'll help you. He'll help you. But you, you can't shut down on God. Don't, don't shut down on him and not let him help you. He got too much promotions for, for your life for you not to let him help you. When I experienced those type of levels of the father, I understood how people throw away their crown, their future, their life. And they don't even know that it's a demon having them do it. Demons are professionals in making you Lose your crown, your anointing, your future, your promise from God. They are experts because they themselves aborted the promise and the plan of God for their life as angels and sons of God. You know why the Bible called them sons of God? They were God's children. You say, oh, how is that able to happen? There's a whole storyline about the father. There's a whole storyline. There's some of you all that I've, I've shared the storyline too. There's a whole storyline. There was his children and all of his children betrayed him. The Bible said that the sons of God come before the Lord talking about Job. These are the former sons of God, but now they're bastards. They create bastards in you. That's why you see one minute people are called sons, they're called daughters, and then the next minute they're like they're, they're adversarial because they have been taken out by fallen angels. In my ministry, I know some of you all have replaced certain people. You know how? Because you look like them. This has happened to me for years. See, some of you all, you just joined my ministry two years ago, three years ago. But see, you don't know the whole story. Some of you all have been five years, six years, four years. You've seen people leave and come in. And if you look at certain people, certain people look like people that fell away. One thing that should arouse you that God always has your replacement. God, Saints, you ever heard me talk? I said, if the Lord wanted, he can raise up another prophet, Joshua Holmes. He can raise up a young man out of the ash heap and, and train that young man and put him through stuff and impart and, 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 and wisdom to him. But he don't got to do that. Because I ain't going to stop. And there's no emotion. There's no offense. There's no spirit. There's no demon that can talk to my mind and damage my mind to make me ever shut down on what the father wants me to do in a moment, in a day, in an hour, in a week, in a month. Glory to God. Glory to God. I say these things to boost you up in this month of December. This is a very prophetic month. It is 21 backwards. It's the last month of their year. I'm already in 2020. You already in 2020. But this month is 12. 
is 21 backwards. And this month will be a deciding factor of what you shall accomplish. This month, you start now. Set your mind on things above right now. Glory to God. Glory to God. In every army, there's a commander. In every army, there's a general. There's someone that releases order and authority and strength and momentum to the army. And that's what I'm doing right now. Everybody, you got to set your mind in this month and you got to get ready for what's to come. So when it comes, it doesn't bother you. When it comes, it doesn't take you out because you don't set your mind. When the bill collector come and start giving you bad reports, when the government comes, start giving you bad reports, when people start coming and give you bad reports, the doctor give you bad reports, you already set your mind and whatever you set your mind, that is going to be your reality. It's going to manifest. It's going to take place, but you got to set your mind. If you imagine yourself struggling, you're going to have struggle for the rest of your life. If you imagine yourself dominating, you're going to dominate for the rest of your life. Wherever your mind is, you set your mind, that's where you're going to be. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. I've learned that. Don't miss your promotion from God. Demons are experts. They get you not to do what God say. You think that you're going to live in this life and not have a demon talk to you? God is not talking to you 24-7. You're crazy. There are demons that roam in your area, in your territory, and they wait for moments where you're not strong in faith. They wait for moments where you're not strong in servanthood. You're not strong in focus. You're not strong in praising God. You're not strong in your thankfulness. They wait for moments, and those are the moments where they boost you up to do the very things that will waive your promotion. That's how evil spirits operate. They're very vindictive. They were once sons of God. You notice God still call them sons. Why did Job call them sons? Because there was a mystery that only prophet Joshua Holmes would be able to unlock. Now other people can unlock it now. It's second hand. <laughs> Glory to God. It's, it's second hand. It's second hand revelation now. I done smoked. I done gave you all the smoke. Now people can get the second hand smoke. You're not living for money. You're living. Through the Lord Jesus and his kingdom laws. And the money will come into your life so that you could represent the dominion of God in all your ways. Wealth gates are hidden for the child of God. The child of God has to be focused and they have to love their man of God. They have to love their prophet, their apostle, the person that is rich soul to you. You have to invest your emotions. You have to invest your mind. You have to invest your body, your effort, your strength, your focus, your attentiveness to that person. And this will bring you into wealth gates. Wealth gates move when you sit at your apostle's feet. You got to be on time. You got to be ready for whatever. And you got to be always attentive. That's how the wealth begins to flow. One one thing that I want to emphasize to you that you cannot move in wealth God's way without honoring an apostle that God has sent to you, that assigned to you. You got to sit at their feet. You got to learn of them. You got to stay connected to them. You got to respect them. You have to love them. Develop love for your apostle. Develop love, not conditional love. That's fake love. Develop unconditional love that you're going to be there for your apostle. Your apostle is there in your life and they need your support. They need your presence. They need your attentiveness. They need your attendance. They need your focus. They need your loyalty. They don't need you talking to other people that don't like them. They don't need you talking to other people that's not for them. They need you to be zoomed into their vision. They need you. See, saints, you look at the broadcast I did earlier. I did that underneath the unction of the Holy Spirit. But if you weigh that out, 
I'm thinking about this. The Lord is talking to me right now. He says, son, I had you speak. It was me speaking through you because I wanted the people to hear that this son was moving with Elisha, but didn't have his same eyes, didn't have his same vision, didn't have his same mindset. He's around someone that's in the glory and his mind is in the demonic. He's looking at the Syrians and his mind is in the Syrian realm. And this is his God. I got Elisha there for him to worship Elisha. That's why I got Elisha right there to worship him. And he worshiping the Syrians. And Elisha has to pray, Lord, open up his eyes for him to see. So, Father, I pray, open up. Everybody that watches me, open up their eyes to see. I pray in Jesus' mighty name. Lord willing. I'll see you later on today, December. Lord, I pray, open up their eyes to see. Lord, I pray in Jesus' name.